Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Pray First, the conversation we have Monday through Friday right here on the Pastor Doug page here on Facebook. We also have a uh, live feed going over on, I believe it is TikTok. Uh, we have YouTube, and we have you. Hashtag live, you're joining during the 7 o'clock hour today on this Thursday. Today is Thursday, August the 5th. August the 5th, come on, here we are. Hashtag record if you're joining recorded and hashtag shared if you will consider putting this out on your page. I appreciate that so much. Uh, today is the first day of school in DeSoto County Schools, and it may be the first day of school or it is very close to the first day of school in the area that you may be watching from. So at the end of today's Pray First, we're going to pray uh, for all of our administration, our faculty, staff, our bus drivers, transportation, all of our parents, and all of our children. So hang out for that uh, at the end of this conversation that we have this morning. Good morning, Courtney Live. I want everybody in here to say, what's up, Courtney? <laughs> hi, Donna. Hi, Larry. Hi, Bar Barbie. Hi, Corrine. Hi, Audra. Hit the hearts, hit the likes, go crazy on those, and let all of our first-time guests know that we are so glad they're here. Hi, Carla. Carla Rogers is a big part of our Pray First family but also our Cross Point family and our Destiny Center family. What's up, Carla? Hi, Becky. Hi, hi everybody. Hi, Stacy. Okay, so yesterday we started talking about uh, principles of prayer that help you and I win the war, and we're talking about the four living creatures out of Revelation chapter 4. It's also mentioned uh, and described in Ezekiel chapter 1, verses 2 through 21. I'm not going to go back and read through that. We've been reading that um, for a couple of weeks now. So if you have missed Pray First or you've missed any episode of Pray First, go back over the past uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays is when, I'm been, when I've been teaching this and uh, catch up on those because we're talking about, uh, it might look uh, a little bit veiled, but it is spiritual warfare. Uh, we're talking about what is heaven crying out to earth. One of Jesus' prayers was that thy kingdom come, Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come. In other words, the lordship of God come on earth as it is in heaven. So what is heaven crying out to earth? What is calling out from the throne room of God? Well, Ezekiel and John both say that God's angels surrounding his throne are saying, come up here a little bit higher. So we go through stages where we teach on worship or we teach on prayer or there's stages in your life where you are hyper-focused on uh, some certain thing. Uh, maybe it is uh, dealing with what you're going through right now. Maybe it is something that God is preparing for you in the future. You need to listen to that. Whatever God has you hyper-focused on right now may help you get through what you're going through now, but it might very well be that he wants to prepare you for what's coming so that you will have that uh, in your spiritual warfare arsenal. So it's important uh, to try to listen, even though it may or may not be dealing with you today. Because, you know, sometimes when I teach or when you hear others teach, you say, that word was for me. I needed that today. Well, guys, it's equally important that you have it tomorrow or next week or next month or next year when you enter that stage and you remember, wait a minute, and the Holy Spirit comes and reminds, here's what Jesus says about this particular thing. So heaven is crying out, come up here. As you go through and you hyper-focused on, say, prayer, or you're hyper-focused on worship, or you're hyper-focused on generosity, and, and, and you step into a church sometimes, and they're teaching on prayer, and you're a prayer warrior, and say, you know, this is the church for me. Well, six months later, they're not talking about prayer anymore, and you think, well, the church has changed. No, the Holy Spirit, the wheel that is beside the four living creatures in Revelation chapter 4 and Ezekiel chapter 1 has caused us to go up higher, the wheel. Remember, the Holy Spirit is in the wheel, and he's calling us to come up here. So the next time you come back around to prayer, you're going to be on a higher level than you were when you were right here. Have you guys noticed that you are spiritually maturing? You should. You should absolutely notice that you are, in fact, spiritually maturing. Isn't it good that we're not just growing older? Hopefully, we're not wasting the data we've collected. You know what I mean? The experiences that we've been through. Because come here, come here, come here. Experience is not the best teacher. Experience is not the best teacher. Have you ever looked at someone and said, how can they keep doing that over and over and over again? Are they galactically goofy? 
Well, experience is not the best teacher. A lot of people have done a lot of things and you look and think, how can they keep doing it? And some people have thought that about you. Evaluated experience is the best teacher. So don't waste the data. We should be growing. We should be maturing. That's the Holy Spirit. That's the wheel beside the four living creatures. Every time it says come up here, we come a little bit higher. So the next time we talk about worship, we say, you know what? I've never heard that before because, come here, come here, the apocalypto, you know, that which was hidden, that which was veiled, apo, un, calypto, covered. God is uncovering things in stages. He's calling you up higher. So the next time you talk about worship, you know, you're going to be on a different plane than you were before. The next time we talk about prayer, you're going to be on a different plane than you were before. So let's talk about prayer today, and you're going to be surprised how much worship is a part of prayer. If you've ever asked me, pastor or friend, Doug, whatever, bum with the pink shirt on, uh, what do I do? I feel oppressed. I feel depressed. Uh, there's something going on that I don't know what's going on. I'm struggling with a sickness. I'm struggling with my marriage. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. I'm being attacked by the enemy. I have more than likely told you to put on worship, to put on praise music, to put on worship music, even if you don't feel like doing it. It launches spiritual warfare in the air around you. It, 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 just like salt, it always seasons. Just like light, it always dispels darkness. Worship always puts the enemy on the run. Even when you don't know what to pray, when you don't know what to do, even when you don't know what's wrong, worship always puts the enemy on the run. So let's jump in. Yesterday we talked about the first a principle of prayer that wins the war because prayer is spiritual warfare. Uh, the first principle of prayer we talked about yesterday was pursuit. You can now pursue God the Father. John chapter 16, verses 23 through 24, Jesus says to his disciples, in that day when the promise, the covenant is fulfilled, you will ask me nothing. Disciples, you've been speaking to me, speaking to me. Old Testament, you've been talking to me, talking to me. I, we showed you yesterday that most of the times that a person, a man, a woman of God, a Hebrews man or woman of God was talking to God in the Old Testament, they were actually talking to Jesus and that Yahweh or yeah, Yahweh was elusive. The ancient of days was fairly elusive. Jesus says when the covenant is fulfilled, you're not going to ask me anything. Most assuredly, I say to you, and remember, he taught us to pray, our Father. Not Don't pray to me necessarily, but pray, our Father who art in heaven, our Yahweh who art in heaven, our Ancient of Days who art in heaven. In that day, Jesus said, you're going to ask me nothing. I've been standing around here. You've been talking to me for a couple thousand years. You're going to ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, Whatever you ask the Father, you're going to get to pursue the Father. When you pursue the Father in my name, in Jesus' name, this is a powerful thing if you don't understand it. We go before the throne of God the Father in the name of Jesus the Son. It is the honor that has been bestowed on us. It is the name above every name that has been given to us. We walk into the throne room as a child of God in the name of Jesus. Just like Paxton Cooper or Jarvis, if they walk into my office, they're walking into my office in our last name. The, the, the authority is in my last name. The privilege is in my last name. The honor is in my last name. It's in the name of Jesus that I have the authority to go boldly into the presence of God. Listen to me. If you want to win spiritual warfare, you have got to get into the presence of God. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run to it and are safe. Guys, we spend a lot of our time running the bases. We've got to get to first. But you can't stay on first. There comes a time when spiritual maturity and God the Father and the throne room of God says, come up higher. Come up here. You've got to go to second. Guys, if you want to get to where you're going, look, I understand that the fastest route from first base is to run back home. But as I said yesterday, God wants to complete the process. He's not going to take you on the quickest, fastest safest way back home. We've got to go to second. 
We've got to go to third, and then we go home. Pursuing God the Father. Principle number two is praise. Everybody, principle number two is praise. Woo! Listen to me. As you mature in God, as you mature in the Holy Spirit, there is nothing that the power of hell can do to quench your joy. You might be sad. You might not be happy. But you will have a joy and a peace that surpasses understanding. You might get hit in the face. Your world might crash around you. Your heart might melt in your soul. Your mind might not shut up and lies and accusations of the enemy may come. But the God who is in you has given you love, power, and a sound mind. When you get into his presence, when you pursue the Father, when you run to the name of the Lord who is your strong tower, Praise is the second principle. The second principle of a prayer, a spiritual warfare prayer that works and helps you win the Bible, win the battle, and the Bible is praise. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. Let's read these verses so we can pray for our students. Jesus says to his disciples, In this manner, therefore, pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Hallelujah to your name. Holy to your name. What are the uh, men and women around the throne of God proclaiming, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Hallowed, hallowed, hallowed. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Holy, holy, holy. He is high and lifted up. He is elevated above me. He is elevated above my marriage. He is elevated above my parenting. He is elevated above my sickness or my family's sickness and disease. He is elevated above death. At his name, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that he is Lord, crying holy. In this manner, therefore, pray, our Father, pursuing the Father. You've been pursuing Jesus, but now you can go into the you can go into Daddy's room because you wear this honor, you wear this authority, you have a name. In this manner, therefore, pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed. So let's just focus on that phrase real quickly. Hallowed be your name. Number one, recognize and pursue the Father by praising Him. Recognize, you say, well, how do I pursue the Father? How, how, do I, how do I do this? How do I pursue the Father? Doug, you keep telling me, go into the presence of God. Run to the name of the Lord. Run to Jesus. You recognize and pursue the Father by praising Him. In this manner, pray, hallelujah, holy, 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 worthy, you are hallowed. Your name is holy. Your name is power. Your name is might. It is dunamis, dynamic, dynamo, dino might, as our boy JJ would say. If you know what that reference is, hashtag yep, yep. Pursue the Father. Pursue his presence. Run to his name by praising him. Second Chronicles. Chapter 20, verse 15. Listen, all of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid. I want you to know one of the ways the enemy's wanting to attack you is through fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And I know it's hard sometimes to separate the feeling of fear and love, power, and a sound mind. Because that feeling, that ugh, that, that nauseousness, that chill, that dread is so powerful in your soul, you're going to have to run into your spirit place. And when you run and tap into your spirit place, and only those of you who are saved can do that, only those of you who are followers of Christ can do that, do you realize that the lost have no spirit? That the spirit is dead in them. It died in the garden in Adam and Eve. God said, in the day you eat of this, you will surely die. So now every spirit in every soul is born dead. And that God resurrects that spirit. And that when your spirit has been resurrected by the love and the blood and your trust in Jesus, that you can then tap into that spirit when you're going through hell on earth. 
Listen, Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you too, King Jehoshaphat, you're not above this principle. There is a king that is above you, king. Thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid or dismayed because of the great multitude that has gathered around you to destroy you. Do not be afraid of their plans. Do not be afraid of their weapons because no weapon formed against you can prosper. Do not be afraid, King Jehoshaphat. Do not be afraid of this great multitude of things that you're coming against and that are coming against you. For the battle is not yours, but God's. I need you all to understand this. We are to engage in spiritual warfare, but we're not to fight. The battle is not yours. The battle belongs to the Lord. I want you to say that. The battle is not mine. The battle belongs to the Lord. Say it out loud. The battle is not mine. The battle belongs to the Lord. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 17. You will not need to fight in this battle. Whoo! You will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourself. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is in you. O Judah, O Jerusalem, O Cross Point. Oh, pray first. Oh, America, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. The Lord thy God is with us. He is mighty to save. We are not alone, Jesus said. In this world, I'm going to leave you, but I'm not going to leave you alone. It is to your advantage that I go away. How, Jesus, can it be to our advantage that you go away? Because if I go, the third part of me, the Holy Spirit, is going to be with you. And now, in my name, through the Holy Spirit, you can talk to the Father. You can pursue a name that people used to not even be able to say. Now you're family. Woo! You don't need to fight. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them, for the Lord your God is with you. Listen, you need to write this down. The battle that I am facing, the battle that I am waging, the battle that I am fighting, the battle that you are facing, the battle that you are waging, the battle that, 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 is, that is in front of you tomorrow or today, the one that we're fighting now, how can we win it? How can I win it? How can we win the battle that we're facing right now? How can I win the battle that I'm facing right now? You give it to God, who has the authority, the ability, the power, and the desire to fight and win it for you. Praise is a weapon. Psalm chapter 149, verses 6 through 9 says this. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Do you notice that swords and praise go hand in hand? And that in Ephesians chapter 6, the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. That when you repeat the Word of God, when you praise with the Word of God, when you speak with the Word of God, when you pray with the Word of God, it is a weapon of warfare. Let the high praises of God be in our mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance on the nation and punishments on the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron." You want to make a difference in your country? Give the battle to the Lord. Give the battle to the Lord to execute, verse 9, to execute on them the judgment, to execute on them the written judgment. This honor have all the saints. Do what? You have been bestowed with a great honor. You have been deputized. You have been badged. You have been marked. You're behind the shield. It's like the authority of a policeman. You're behind the shield. You're behind another name. You're representing the authority. You're representing the power. The power. You are walking in the name of your Father, Heavenly Father. It's an honor that's been bestowed on all the saints. When you worship, it is an honor that is bestowed on all the saints. When you praise, it is an honor that has been bestowed upon all the saints. Praise is a weapon of honor that has been bestowed upon all the saints. 
Here's the question, and then we're going to pray. Are you living in this honor? Are you standing in this honor? Are you putting on the badge? Are you putting on the shield of faith that will quench the fiery darts? The shield is the badge. The shield is the honor. You now speak in the name of Jesus with all the authority of the Father. Are you walking in that honor? Are you exercising that honor? Or are you being beaten up every day by everything, every news clip, every new COVID-19 release, every new variant, every new political statement, every time the White House, every time the radio, ah, oh, that CNN, ah, oh, that Fox. Are you being tossed? Are, are you being distracted? Is your family being pummeled by someone who wants to kill, steal, and destroy from you while ignoring the honor that has been bestowed on you to walk in power in the name of Jesus? Father, for every person out there today, God, I pray that we would stand strong, that we would stand bold, that we would stand courageous against the power of the enemy. Lord, that we would understand we're not called to fight, we're called to sing. Father, I pray today this, this song, I pray today this song, I pray today this song over all of our children, all of our schools, our administration, our faculty, our staff, our transportation drivers, our bus drivers, our parents, no spirit, but your Holy Spirit have your way in our community, in our families, in our schools, in our children. We apply the honor that has been bestowed on us, the authority we have over cities, counties, regions, states, and the nations, in the name of Jesus, behind the badge, behind the shield of faith, we pray right now that the fiery darts of the enemy that would be directed towards, aimed at our students and our children and our faculty and our staff and our educational system would be quenched. And that the banner of Jehovah Nisi would fly from the rooftops of schools all over the world, much like crosses do all over Rome. In Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, in the power and the authority of the blood of the sacrificial lamb of God himself, resurrected on the third day and with us now. It's in that name we pray. Your name, Jesus. And all God's people said, amen. There is an authority that you can feel when you stand behind the honor of the badge, the shield, the name. If you're struggling today, run into the presence of God in worship and in praise, and I promise you, You'll write me later and say, you were right. I love you guys so much. I know I know we're just kind of online, if that's a just a, but there's no time and space between brothers and sisters in Christ, and the Holy Spirit is with us. He's drawing people, and I love you guys very, very much. I don't just say it. I feel it, and I mean it, and I'll see you later. If you're coming this weekend to Cross Point, it's going to be fire. <laughs> oh my goodness, starting a new series. Take the lead. Man, our communities are desperate for leadership. That leadership's you.